If I was stranded on a desert island with stable electricity and an internet connection, the Tiki from Falcon Northwest would be my paradise PC. As would that island, because that sounds rad. It's powerful, it's ruggedly built, and the name alone makes me want to have one of those fancy drinks with a tiny umbrella on it. Too bad I'm stuck on an island, Damien. I don't sit around thinking about getting stranded at sea or whatever message in a bottle I'd send out in hopes of being rescued. But when I do travel, I always consider what gear I'm gonna need with me. And lately, the Falcon Northwest Tiki is on my shortlist of things to pack. It has become my go-to travel PC for gaming, production, and streaming in these moments that I know I'm gonna need a powerful rig on the road. And guys, these have traveled all over the United States and in some cases the world with me, and they hold up quite well. Over the past few months, we've had the privilege of checking out two different configurations of the Tiki, and let me tell you, one can do a lot. Toucan is a tropical bird found on that island I was talking about earlier, and the mascot for a fruity, colorful cereal. Falcon Northwest offers both Intel and AMD options starting at around $3,400. I, I know, I know that is a lot of money, but there are some perks that come with the price tag. We're gonna share our thoughts on that a little bit later. Now, before we get into specs, let's talk about the physical size of the Tiki. The Falcon Northwest Tiki is 13 inches tall, 13.6 inches deep, and four inches wide. That is slightly bigger than two family-sized boxes of Fruit Loops. And yes, I made another toucan joke because no one can do repeat jokes quite like a toucan can. Now, as for the weight, don't let the size fool you. The Tiki, you know what, it might be small in size, but these bad boys are hefty. The PC alone weighs 18 pounds, but the aluminum stand adds another six pounds to it. So we're talking about at least 24 pounds of PC power. And we also have to talk about the utterly insane, and I do mean insane UV print jobs Falcon Northwest can do for their PC cases and laptops. As you are configuring a system, you have the option to customize a single panel, the front panel, or the entire thing. And the quality of it, it's just out of this world. I cannot tell you how many times people have stopped just to look at how epic the print on this is. As for the AMD system, well, this is a different story. Our friends over at Blue Horse Studio helped us get this rig ready to travel to QuakeCon to celebrate the release of Starfield, hence the Starfield themed PC. You can check out the crazy custom work over on our Instagram, as well as our QuakeCon shenanigans where we gave away over $75,000 in hardware right here. Let's get into the nuts and bolts of what's inside of our Tiki system. For the AMD system, we have an AMD Ryzen 9 7950X3D CPU socketed into the ASUS ROG Strix B650E-I gaming Wi-Fi motherboard with a Radeon RX 7900 XTX for our GPU. Unfortunately, it's not the Starfield one, but don't worry, that's coming in a different video. Our CPU is cooled by an Asetek liquid cooler AIO with a 120 millimeter radiator, and for storage, the AMD Tiki has a two terabyte crucial T700 PCIe Gen 5 NVMe drive. That's right, this has got all the AMD bells and whistles. That's why I pet it. For our Intel system, we have an Intel Core i9-13900 socketed into an ROG Strix B760i gaming Wi-Fi motherboard. For the CPU cooler though, it's different. We have Intel's RH1 air cooler. Don't panic. Yes, we are air cooling an i9 and it's gonna be okay. Let's keep going with the specs. As for the GPU, we have the Asus ProArt RTX 4080. This is really important to point out because the ProArt RTX 4080 is one of the few 2.5 slots 4080s on the market, which makes it perfect for the Tiki. For storage, our Intel build has a four terabyte Kingston Fury Renegade PCI Gen 4 NVMe drive. Both systems are running Kingston Fury RAM, running at 6,000 mega transfers. We got 32 gigs in the AMD system and 64 gigs in the Intel one. And they are both powered by Silverstone's 1000 watt small form factor PSU, the SX, SFX-L Platinum. You know what, say that 10 times fast, that's terrible. All in, our AMD configuration costs $4,942, and our Intel Tiki comes in at slightly lower at $4,641. That's right, there is literally almost $10,000 in Tiki's right here. Now, quick note here. These prices do not include the cost of this amazing custom UV print. If you wanna throw that in, it'll set you back $149 to customize the front, $149 per side panel, or $399 for the whole thing. So essentially now the Intel one is more expensive than the AMD one, cause it's over 5,000. So they look stunning and the parts are fantastic, 
But you know what, given the small case and chassis, how do they actually perform? Well, we're gonna look at some performance in games as well as thermal performance on both CPU and GPU. Now we ran these tests on the case closed as well as open to see if there was a noticeable difference because there is a lot, and I do mean a lot jammed into these things and not a whole lot of extra room for air. At idle, the 7950X3D averaged around 44 degrees Celsius with the case open and around 49 degrees with the case closed. During this test, the RX 7900 XDX hovered around 29 with the case open and 33 with the case closed. For comparison, if we jump over to the Intel, the Core i9-13900 idled at 47 degrees Celsius on average with the case open and around 51 degrees with the case closed. The Asus ProArt RTX 4080 stayed pretty chill in this test, hitting around 27 degrees with the case open and 28 degrees with the case closed. Under load, the margin is a bit slimmer for the CPU. With the case closed, our Ryzen 9 hovered around 78 and running at 77 with the case open. With the Core i9, we had a slightly different picture. With the case open, CPU temps averaged at 68 while hovering at 64 with the case closed. That's right, it was actually better in the case closed scenario thanks to the awesome fan they've added. Basically, the story here is that under 100% CPU load, the Tiki's cooling solutions kept both the 7950X3D and the Core i9 in the same place I like to be most days, a comfortable distance away from TJ Maxx. Not the store, it's the temperature. Now, during our gaming benchmarks, we ran a suite of five different games at 1440p to get a different picture of how thermal performance as the GPU and CPU work together. On our AMD Tiki, with an open case, we saw an average overall CPU temp of 58 degrees Celsius and 66 degrees on the CPU. With the case closed, we saw 66 degrees overall on the CPU and 71 on the GPU. Now on our Intel Tiki, we saw a similar picture to what we saw on our CPU load test. Temperatures were actually higher with the case open than with the case closed. And we're not just talking about a few numbers tipping things in the favors of closed case, or a close race either. Our 13900 averaged out to 71 degrees Celsius in our gaming benchmarks with the case open and 65 with the case closed. <laughs> you guys were worried about air cooling? Jeez, that's a six degree difference of improvement. Now, what about the actual gameplay performance? How did the Tiki's do? Let's start with our AMD system. In Cyberpunk 2077, we saw an average frame rate of 76.82 while running again at 1440p on ray tracing ultra settings and FSR 2.1 set to balance. In Forza Horizon 5, on extreme settings with FSR 2.2 set to balance, the AMD Tiki ran at a smooth 185 frames per second. Moving on to Modern Warfare 2, we turned down presets to minimum to match competitive settings and it added FSR 2.1 at balanced settings. In our benchmarks, we saw frame rates of 259 frames per second. Let's be honest, it's actually probably better now because they've had some big improvements, so I'm expecting actually over 300. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the AMD Tiki hit 243 frames per second with Intel's XE Super Sam turned on, since obviously FSR isn't available in this one, this is all running at the highest preset. In Tiny Tina's Wonderland, with graphics set to badass and FSR 2.1 set to balance, the Tiki lived up to the preset's name with a showing of 231.85 frames per second. When we looked at performance in competitive titles like Apex Legends with visuals set to low, we saw an average frame rate of 297.9 FPS, and finally in Fortnite with low settings and TSR enabled to balanced, we got a frame rate of 520.5 FPS. Okay, AMD, not bad. Now let's head over to our Intel and NVIDIA Tiki and just see how it stacks up. In Cyberpunk 2077, we saw an average frame rate of 171.37 FPS at 1440p with ray tracing on Ultra and DLSS 3 set to balance. Yes, DLSS makes that much of a difference. In Forza Horizon 5 at extreme settings with DLSS set to balance, the Intel Tiki ran at 232 frames per second. Moving on to Modern Warfare with DLSS set to balance, we saw graphics settings at minimum. We saw frame rates of 209. You know what, I'll be honest, man, AMD, Modern Warfare loves AMD. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the Intel Tiki hit 216 frames per second with DLSS set to balance. This is all while running at the highest preset. And in Tiny Tina's Wonderland, with graphics set to badass and the absence of DLSS FSR 2.0 was set to balance, the Intel and Nvidia Tiki proved that it too was worthy of the preset name and showing 219 frames per second. In Apex Legends, with visuals set to low, we got an average frame rate of 284.4 FPS. And finally in Fortnite, with low settings and DLSS set to balance, we got frame rate average of 361.5. Man. 
I'll tell you again, Fortnite loves the uh, AMD. Overall, both systems performed awesomely, but there are some situations where you can see clear differences in performance between the two, especially in games where DLSS or FSR had a stronger implementation. I know I said this in the intro, but the Tiki has become my go-to travel PC, even though, you know what, they really aren't intended to be, but one of the things I actually really enjoy is I've been telling the team over at Falcon about my travel experiences, and they have been helping to improve the design for things like, you know, uh, screws coming loose and stuff like that, because they wanna make these better. I just wanna be super clear, they are ridiculously well-designed. And with their compact form, they are small enough that they could fit in any entertainment center next to a PS5 or an Xbox Series X without dominating the space. And they snuggle into a padded Pelican case so well. As you can see from the numbers, these things are no slouches and they'll do just about anything I need them to do on the road or in the studio. We saw solid game performance and for a PC this size, Using the components Falcon Northwest is using, the Tiki was really impressive with how it handled the heat Intel, AMD, and Nvidia so generously love to supply. I mean, seriously, we are sweating right now, aren't we? Now, under CPU load, both Tiki machines performed well with their thermal limitations. And when you look at the spectrum of temperatures we've seen in our full-size PC case reviews, temps in this thing, not bad in either case. While our CPUs ran a bit warmer in the gaming benchmarks, both Tiki's handled everything we threw at them. The only struggle I have is which one to bring with me because they're both so pretty. Which brings us to the price. We have to talk about it and what you are actually getting with a Tiki you purchase. We're not gonna gussy it up. Falcon Northwest makes some premium products that come with a premium price. So here are a few things to consider. The first thing, number one, like we saw with the frag box, the Tiki has been specifically engineered to fit all of the components that they are cramming into this tiny box. In theory, honestly, you could go out, buy the hardware for the most part outside of the case and do a similar build for quite a bit less money. But Falcon Northwest has this down to a literal science with case design, cable management, fan placement, thermal management, GPU bracket, and an army of people with tiny hands. We don't know for sure about the last part, but every time we do a tiny build, we wish we had one of those like people with tiny hands on speed dial. Now, when you consider the growing demand modern components have for the power and the heat that they generate, Falcon Northwest's obsession for their engineering has kept the Tiki around for 20 years while others have given up on smaller builds altogether. Which brings us to consideration number two. Each component that goes into a Falcon Northwest system is carefully curated for optimal performance, dependability, and compatibility. That means that there is no guessing game on what parts are actually going into your system. No using what is cheap or what's on hand to slap into a build and ship it out the door. When you configure a PC with Falcon Northwest, you're gonna know the brands, the speeds, and the specs without having to wonder if you hit the lottery or lost out on one of those one-arm bandit attacks. Which brings us to consideration number three. It's actually the Falcon Northwest warranty. If you have ever tried to do an RMA or return a PC part, it can be frustrating. It can be terrible to go back and forth with a company to prove your issue. You have to do things like proof of purchase and show that the damage wasn't caused by giving your PC the people's elbow, which, you know what, these things are solid. Don't do it to these, by the way. All of that doesn't even take into consideration the amount of time it takes to do all of the communication to set up the RMA, sometimes across multiple time zones too. Days can turn into weeks and you could be looking at a month or more of PC downtime, leaving you singing, can't stand losing you to your empty or derelict desktop. This is not the case with Falcon Northwest. Not only do they have lifetime technical support, each Tiki comes with a three year parts and labor warranty out of the box. That is huge. If that wasn't enough, Falcon has an overnight shipping service that is free to customers if something goes wrong with your PC within the first year. So that's peace of mind on a few fronts. Intentional engineering, curated parts, and a killer warranty to keep you where you wanna be with a system you own, using it and enjoying it. For a petite PC, the Falcon Northwest Tiki packs a huge punch in both configurations we tested. With solid performance in gaming, hardware that can be tailored to your needs, and huge peace of mind that comes with stellar tech support. The Tiki continues to reinforce the Falcon Northwest tradition of being some of the best pre-built systems money can buy, but it does take a lot of money. Those are our impressions of the Falcon Northwest Tiki, and we wanna know what you think. So let us know down in the comments below. I know they're expensive, are they worth it? And again, worth and value is gonna be different from person to person. Now, 
While you're down there, go ahead and slap that subscribe button, whip that like button, and ring that notification bell so you get a notification each and every time we post a video like this over here on Robitech. Super appreciate you watching this video. We look forward to seeing you on the next one.